interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you breaking news. Offstage Acting, the podcast, now introduces a new segment called Actors News. All kinds of news that is relevant for actors, but it's not as boring as it sounds. For all your acting news and information, go to offstageacting.com. Now we take you live into the Offstage Acting Studio to find out more. All right. Why do you look so great? And I look just like a... Oh, my God, Todd. I hope I hope we're airing. I hope we're airing so that everyone could hear Todd complimented me. No, that'll be cut. We're recording. We're There's no that. way. You can't cut that. You can't. No. No one will ever know <laughs> that I have a heart. Yes. That, uh, yeah. Dang. Oh. Forget it. Fine. It's not my. That's not my public persona. I'll be one of those that in in private he was a very like Don Rickles. In yeah, private, but he and was you a have very... to. Yeah, like you have to go to a party, right? And you find out like the inner workings of Todd is that actually he's like a really nice yeah, guy. Yeah, I was right? so surprised because intrigue. His, yeah, because his 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 public persona is just ghastly. <laughs> Just, just ghastly. But he gets things done. <laughs> uh, but he gets the job done, that's right. Mm-hmm. Speaking of getting the job done, boom, baka chakalaka. Yeah. Here we go again. Y- yes, boom chakalaka. I can't laka, believe boom. it. We must be doing something right if we're back again for another installment. Episode five. Yeah, I don't know if we're saying episodes anymore. Offstage oh. acting, just because I might want to put them out of order. Oh my point. God. You know what I mean? Well, and now I you've love done just it. everything up. I mean, screwing well, you just did up. that now twice. You just screwed up my podcast twice in a row. Do we have to restart? Well, you have you have great quacks. There's no going back. Yeah, the quacks. You just want more quacks. That's why you the quack. fill the podcast with nasties. All your profanity. Jay curses like a truck driver. Hi. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know it from the last. Um, X amount of episodes, but I do. He's got a filthy um, mouth on him. That's why we decided to keep it clean, folks. Welcome back to another podcast episode. We'll call it episode five. Why not? Who knows? <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it goes out of order. We don't know what we're doing if you can't tell. But um, we know that you know that we love acting. And yes, indeed. We want to spread the joy of acting to all the children of the world. Isn't that right, Jay? Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. We want all the children in the world to go, wow. And just like Santa and his little elf, you know, Todd and Jay, we acting. come into your house and give you acting. We bring you acting joy on That's the right. International Day of Acting. That's, That's right. Every day is International Day of Acting in my book. It, is there actually? I bet there is an International Day of Acting. <laughs> I bet that be. is a thing. Let's talk to our There's union. There's a day for everything. Yeah, there's a day for everything. Why is <laughs> yeah. Everybody's acting the all the time. We're all acting. <laughs> Yeah, where's the SAG? Union? We're going to talk, talk about SAG. unions, by the way. We need to talk about unions, SAG and equity. First of all, though, let's uh, let's catch up with you, Jay. Okay. Um, how was your week? Any 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 new? What's new in your world, in the acting world, for you? Hello. Um. So it's nothing very new in the acting world. I've said hello how many times? I know now? you almost made me snort. That's, that's my go-to. I snorted like, coffee through my nose. <laughs> I went Let's to take a sip of coffee thinking, <laughs> thinking, okay, I can take a breather. He's going to take over for me. And I literally snorted coffee out my nose. Hello. Uh, Hello, I'm uh, Jay. Okay. Okay, yeah. So nothing new on the acting oh, front except God. for except for being a professional dungeon master for Dungeons & Dragons. That's my – I've started to get money as a game master for D&D. Oh, that's good. Um, it, this is Does my Does that style. count as acting? I count it as acting. It's creative. I know you, I, I, yeah. It's acting in it. Okay, you thanks, do. Todd. I know you do, I, but would it be acting, counted by others, professionals? There's acting in it, for sure. There's also a lot of other things in it. There's like, directing uh, in it. There's writing in right. it. There's nerdery. So All the nerdery. There's, oh, yes, that's right. And in one of the episodes, we learned that Todd hates nerds. I'm anti-nerd. That's right. um, I have a bias. I'm not anti-nerd. I'm not anti-anything. But I do have a bias towards nerds. Um, and then Jay um, pops up and says, I do D&D. I, I, Does everybody know what Dungeons and Dragons are? Is I, They probably don't. And you said before we started the podcast, Jay, we can bring things up without going into it. And maybe this is 
maybe we don't go into it because I could talk for so long. About I bet it. you, you know what I feel like you have in your future? What A do I have? A spin off podcast about Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I. That doesn't we, suck I, the life out of my podcast. <laughs> That's which about would be actual acting. But uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I, I joke a bit. I, I, I think there probably is a lot of acting in Dungeons and Dragons. I know it's a lot of fun. People love it. I know you love it. And I'm glad you're I getting do. paid because you should be paid to do what you love. Thank you. Yes. And it's also, it's a lot of work too. So as the mm. game master, you put in a lot. So I had good friends that were like, Jay, like we will pay you and you should do other groups and you need to make them pay you. Mm. And so I've had terrific, good friends. Terrific dungeon master. Do you have a name? Um. Well, like right a... now I go by Jay Genie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's snorting oh, his coffee I again. Cannot, I got two not... in an episode. <laughs> I can and... no longer drink when you speak. <laughs> it's not going to be possible. Oh, oh that's precious. You have uh, got to be kidding. Excuse me? I, that's precious, I said. Precious. Wow. Precious. I love it. Jay um, Genie. Jay Genie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, mm. I, you gotta, mm. I, and it's my thing. I can't schedule. You know, I can't schedule for people. I can only be there. My one rule as a game like master, it just works. Is you funny. have to want to be there. Is yeah. you, you have to rub the lamp. You gotta want me, and I'll come. Anything <laughs> you want. <laughs> oh, you just, I'm I'm reluctant to get off this topic because it has so many implications for for just pure mayhem and comedy. But it has nothing to do with acting, unfortunately. Um, okay. Anyway, you, Todd, how are you? Thank what you. Is... Thank you for asking, Jay Genie. Um, that's going to come back, though. Boy, we're going to have fun with that in the future. Um, oh, God. i got to come up with a Dungeons & Dragons name. I literally have coffee in my nose, so if you'll excuse me. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, audiences. Woo, I'm having a cup of coffee, so I stay lively. But I didn't realize all I needed was a cup of Jay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, boom! Loaded with a hot toddy. <laughs> yeah, that's Jay's name for me, by the way. I don't know. I told him once I would give him five quid every time he said my name. Uh, called me hot toddy, and he's trying to rack up the points now. He's good. He wants to go Man. for twenty-five pounds per, per. I'm really trying to get that nice gym episode. With so what's what's what, what's up in my world? Actually, while mm -hmm. we were speaking, believe it or not, my agent, um who I haven't heard from in over a decade. Uh, <laughs> Voice over or acting? Acting agent has sent me a, um, she just sent me a text saying she sent me a self-tape. Oh, cool. So should we see what it is? Shall I share? A, oh, wow, this I, is exciting. To. Yeah, so now you're gonna get live details. This came in just moments ago, live in this offstage acting studio. Todd has Todd. received, um, I probably can't say too, too much about it. I can tell you it's a commercial. Shoots in Chile. Ooh. So that could be fun. Love their wine. I won't ever get it. Don't worry. Um, love their wine. Yeah. Oh, I love their llamas. <laughs> I love their alpacas. Well, um, I think Chilean. I love their sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, anyway, so it's a commercial. <laughs> Must be American. Tick. Uh -huh. Nice. Able to do a very good Amer or able to do a very good American accent, and that's a topic that we're going to talk about. Doing accents, we got to talk about that at some point, because mm. they're looking for Americans. They're casting here. They're probably casting elsewhere in the world. Um, playing age, it's got my playing age in there, which I won't expose. Any okay. height, gender male, good tick. So, I'm 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 narrowing. He is sad. Oh, without oh. coming across as angry. Brr. Mm. I'm working that work out the Jay has helped okay. me by the way with self tapes in the past um, eyes that can show emotion audience if you're watching on YouTube are my eyes showing sad? what do you think Jay wow there's so much okay what am I reading I'm reading oh sadness but not angry but, no but anger. hopeful no anger hopeful oh, but likable character characterful vulnerable do I look vulnerable Oh, our man will be talking about. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Okay, I know. Uh -oh. Now I feel bad. Now I feel bad. It says. Oh, why, do you, why do you feel bad? It, well, because it says. <laughs> our oh, man God. will be talking about his depression. 
So oh. we, so we need actors who are okay with this. So it's 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 going to be an ad for uh, something for people with depression. So have apology. you <laughs> apology have you ever that. had depression, Todd? <laughs> I'm getting there now. Actually, I'm starting to feel a bit <laughs> just from this. <laughs> this just from this segment. This, this segment and this episode is. Um, not to make right. it, I, by the way, I am a mental health first aider, um, trained. Do you know what that is? I kind of do. Does that mean that you like are, you're, you are trained to like help in mental health crises? Correct. Correct. Yeah. In oh. the, in the U S and here, I, I took a, I took a couple courses because I teach and because mental health is, uh, you know, an issue mm-hmm. and, uh, can be an issue. Excuse me while I wipe my nose. Um, I, I took the time to uh, to become mental health aid certified, which means that you can sort of uh, recognize when somebody is, is going through a, a, a state or having a moment and might need to be, you know, um, signposted to the proper professionals pr- yeah, hmm. that, that could help. So if somebody's feeling depressed or, um, uh, you know, God forbid, worse, then um, please call your local uh, hotline. This there. is Did that actually that's it? a I think good. I, covered it. I think you. That's a really if good it, topic for an episode. Maybe I think mental health is really mental big for health acting. for acting. Big, big. Why? Why is that? Why? Why is mental health a big thing for actors? Rejection. Oh, rejection. Yeah, Constant rejection. Like when I don't get this commercial, I will probably become depressed from the sense of rejection I feel. Then I will have to take the product that I was meant to be advertising. Jeez, I hope they never hear this. They'll. they'll uh, yeah, this is now. Um, are, it, <laughs> well, and now we're starting to get mad. I, did, I didn't name. It's meta, isn't it? I didn't name it's names. Meta. Anyway, yeah. uh, the good news is I have a casting, so that that's not bad. Yeah, um, in further Todd news, uh, what else has been going on? I did a I did an ADR session last week. Uh huh. For a movie, which I will not talk about now, because that would be really inappropriate. Um, but uh, it was a good room, good group. Uh, Youssef, good friend. Uh, you might do you know Youssef? Good guy. I I think so. He's a he's an actor and he's been doing um, directing these ADR sessions now. He, he'll be a guest on the show at some point. He's great, oh, fun okay. guy, very very cool, very professional. Uh, Moroccan, French, American, British. You can't tell what he is, but we uh, love that. Yeah, yeah. He's big and he's he's funny and uh, he's a great actor, really. Um, you can see him in a show called Home on Channel Four, I think, hmm. um, and another show that just came out. He's he's got a big role in that too. I'm not sure that, but I saw a few episodes of Home, and he's great in it. So recommend well, well, that. He is getting plugged in the he's show. He's getting a note. big plug there, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, I've been doing Mark Twain. Yes, the... you said this. Tell I want to hear about it. Well, it's very difficult. Um, those of you who ever wanted to do audiobooks or thought about doing audiobooks um, or would like to do audiobooks, I can tell you there's a lot of great stuff t- about doing it, especially if you get great works. So I, I'm really chuffed, as we say, um, to have gotten great works. And You're doing a Mark Twain audiobook. That is really cool. The Complete Works. So uh, it's a group I uh, that uses me quite a bit these days called Word Lake. Another plug out there. And... Um, that's Chris over at Word Lake. What's up? And um, <laughs> he'll be happy because I spoke to him today about actually being a guest as well. When I called him to apologize and kind of say, oh, "I'm a little behind on some of the some of the work here. Is it is the deadline really?" And we we agreed that the deadline wasn't quite what what we had in, initially specified. They do a lot of classic um, works, and so I'm I'm up for doing some Henry David Thoreau in the future with them and and this, but. Oh, my dad would love that. Yeah, it's cool, but uh, Twain is just like, oof. What uh, makes audiobooks so hard? Everyone, I've yet to do, I've done like a segment for an audiobook, but I haven't done a full audiobook, and everyone talks about how hard they are. Wh- why? Um, you have to maintain a, a kind of composure while you're doing it, um, which means silence in in the sense of like, you know. Uh, so it's it's an exercise. Mostly it's in breathing and energy. Uh, you can't allow your energy to wane as you start to mm. read a book. So you have to, I always try to imagine I'm reading the book to a child. Um, so it has that same kind of energy and vitality, 
at all times and life behind every word because the tendency Mm -hmm. is to just slip into like a person that is reading a book and and with twain you have to do that for hours yeah yeah and you got to keep pumping the energy back into it some you know most audiobooks are the proper book is like eight eight hours ten hours uh, and you want to get paid per finished hour, right? So you're actually recording yeah. like well, way yeah, more than yeah, 10 hours. Yeah, you're recording more than that. So that's the finished hour. Yeah, we can talk about that in the future too, how how you get paid cool. for audiobooks. But something like Twain, which the language is over 100 years old. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's also, not modern It's not at modern, all. so it doesn't flow in a way that you might predict it does. And there's a way mm. to read that you kind of, can predict you, sp- you prep the book anyway you, you read it in advance and all this but there's a way to sort of predict sometimes the next words but he he uses old-timey language and, hmm. and a lot of and the vernacular is colloquial but it's colloquial of the day so um and there's a lot of characters too um in twain a lot of very rich characters so you don't want to not give credence to the character hmm so I like, you know, I try to throw out a voice and, and change things up and, and make that all lively, too. And sometimes you have characters in dialogue with each other. Mm. You know, so you have this guy who's talking to this guy. And then you have Mandy, what, why Mandy May coming out? And she's talking like, and then I did one that was a horse. You know, he's talking to another <laughs> horse. <laughs> That's a horse's tail. But they're doing the complete anthology works of Mark Twain right now, which is going to be great when it comes out. And we're going to have Chris from Word Lake. I talked to him today. We had a long conversation, and I told him, hey, you know what? We had a pretty good conversation. I said, I got a little podcast, and I'd like to have you on as a guest. So um, hopefully he'll be joining us in the future, and he'll tell us all about audiobooks and how it works mm. um, as a producer. So that's cool. That's uh, that's that's kind of news cool. in my world. Yeah, yeah. Keeping busy with the with the voice and, and the castings and, and the audiobooks. Uh, so that's the life of an actor. Life goes on. There we are. Yeah. Now, we also uh-huh. wanted to talk about, well, I kind of wanted to do a new segment. Put the music on. So explain. <laughs> We're going to do the music first. Right. I love it. Here we go. This is a new segment. Entertainment news of the world. Brought to you by Offstage Acting. Oh, I didn't get it right. So, that was so good. No, no, no. Was that good? was great. All right, now you do one. Ready? Okay. Welcome to Offstage Acting, where we tell you about the news. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was fine. Need some work. I'll give that a <laughs> three out of ten. <laughs> so, but explain the segment. Well, we're going to give you entertainment news today. Um, yeah, I guess there no, isn't about... much to explain, is there? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what more. Uh, entertainment, e-news, but isn't that like a... That's, that's like, a thing. No, we're not doing e-news. That's already a copy. That's copyright, trademarked. Uh, please do not sue or in any way uh, come after our, our affiliated brand of offstage acting, which has nothing to do with e-entertainment news network. <clears throat> Disclaimer. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that was legal or not. My lawyer can tell me. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we decided that uh, obviously, you know, with so many news items coming up uh, all the time uh, around actors and acting, and when we had the SAG uh, strike, SAG after strikes going on, yeah. and stuff, there's a lot going on, and it's we don't just want to talk about actors and acting the the craft of it. We want to talk about some of the business stuff and some of the some of the big news items that go on in the world today. So. What's the, oh. yeah, there is a big news item. Well, the uh-huh. biggest news item, of course, and we'll talk about it after we talk about the thing that I'm going to talk about now. No, I'll, I'm will i going to talk about the thing that we'll talk about later now. Then I'm going to go it. back and talk about the first thing that I want to talk about before we talk about the thing that I'm going to talk about right now. Todd, I hope when you go back and you do the YouTube clip, you put like the calculus, like from the hangover, like going down the screen, you know, like the math in the head while you're doing oh that section. God. I took that's, another that's sip of coffee as right you were there. speaking like an idiot. Um, yeah, I'll do exactly that. Thank um, you. Whatever, whatever you want me to do. <laughs> so the, the big news item we'll talk about later. The Academy Awards. That's just an example Woo! of the kind of news they announced the Academy Awards. Um uh, have been announced, you know, uh, so we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, 
where there's, great. there's lots of great stuff. There's stuff going on. Uh, well, we won't Sa- bring. Hmm. I know. Remember, I was saying SAG. There were the strikes, and then I guess we're not bringing it up. But I know, like you know, gun related things. Um, yeah, I was just about to say. I, I'm not sure if I was going to bring it up now, but then you brought it up. So yeah, Rust and, and poor Alec Baldwin uh, and, and his troubles and everyone involved there. Tragic, tragic, tragic. Um, but uh, that'll be back in the news, of course, and and people will have sort of questions and and still wondering what's going on with that. And I can so, tell you a few things from experience myself. Um, being on sets with guns, and um, mm. I held a gun. I think every time I was on a set, I had a gun in my hand. Almost. Um, how how American? Well, that's why because general general generally. That's mm-hmm. a that's a new word I just made up. Genumerally, yeah. Genberal. I, I want. I was combining generally and genuinely. And oh, okay. I think I don't want to. I was combining some, and there was a B in there too. Generally, I uh, yes. have been cast as an American soldier, serviceman. Yeah, serviceman. Thank you for your service. Um, and yeah, firing guns mm. with uh, you know, guns, uh, gunnery. Smiths and and uh, arm armory department guys running around and, and handling the weapons. So I have a lot of experience with that. Um, not for today's episode, although we do like to tease, don't we? We like to bring all these things up and then we just go. Mm, we'll talk about it later. We are like we're pure teasers. Like that's yeah, like that's our entire <laughs> episode is just us teasing, teasing topics. Yeah, teasing topics. Hey guys, just, do you want to hear about this? Well, stay tuned. You want to hear about this other thing? You have Ooh. to like and follow and subscribe and come back and never leave us alone. Mm. Never, you can never turn your back on us because yeah, we might start talking right. about the thing that you thought we weren't going to talk about. And then we started talking about it and you right. blew it. You blew it because you walked away. But then this coffee is kicking in. I went, I went with the bulletproof coffee, you know? You know what that is? Yo, I do know bulletproof coffee and I'm a big, I am a big fan of it. I'll tell you what I do. I was doing this before it became a thing. There's a guy, he he came up with the phrase bulletproof, but pre hipster, um, hipster, great. Yeah, I was pre hipster. I was I was hipster when hipster wasn't cool. It's not cool oh, now, but I was cool. And the singer the yeah. hipster singer comes. I was country. Um <laughs> Okay, but what did coconut, you do? Co- coconut oil and butter yes. ghee. Oh, you use ghee. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Gotta use the ghee. Mm. Gotta use the ghee. And then it gets creamy. Mm. It's it's better than milk or any cream, and it gives you that mm. energy boost that you need to get through a, a languishing podcast like this. <sighs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. So in the big news, this came in my email system today. Are you familiar with email, Jay? Yes, I am familiar so, with email. You know what? You know what mail is, right? I, indeed. So now they've got a thing called email, yes. which stands for electronic. Uh-huh. And it's interesting because then it will come electronically into yes. an inbox and then you open it like a, anyway. All right. I won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Exhaust. Yes. Wait, but what did you receive? You oh, teaser? that's right. Teaser. Um, I received uh, something from my union. Are you a member of equity? Uh, I was in UK. Yeah. I was a member of UK equity. I don't know if I still am. I paid dues once and then I was just like. For like a month, one month. No, for a year. Oh, okay. Or for, I don't know, however long it was. I just gave them money for whatever reason. All right. We're going to have talks. Here's more teasing. Okay. We're going to have we're gonna, we're gonna have to talk about equity at some point as well. And, so what did you receive in your electronic mail? And, and SAG if you're in America. But join your union. Stand in solidarity with your fellow actor. Um, I'm a representative of equity uh, for my branch here where I live. Oh. Um, yeah, so I try to help get people to. Union strike oh. strike. Now here's here's interesting though. Okay, you're you're not you're not sure if you're a member of Equity, which is our union here for actors in the United Kingdom, not as powerful as SAG in the United States, but similar. Are you a member of Spotlight? Uh huh. Now explain to the audiences what Spotlight is, please. Uh, and Spotlight, I'm going to drink my I... coffee while you talk, so don't say anything funny or stupid. Okay, so um, I'm just going <laughs> to talk about um, Spotlight. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not funny. I'm not funny. That's I'm near channel. No, not you funny. are stupid, though. Spotlight um, is a online, Rude. basically, casting platform. It's um, mm. what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like um, a casting sheet. It's a CV. Mm. It's a resume. It's a profile yeah. that you put your resume, your photos up, and that's 
where yeah Oof. it's the professional cv for actors in the uk yeah okay it might be a, yeah it might yeah pretty, yeah it might have been a simpler way to say that it's, i'm sure yeah <laughs> I'm I'm I I, I 100%. don't listen. English is my one and only language, and it is not. I'm not. Is very English good at your it. first language? It is my first, and well, you know, other than you know, the language of L of, amor, of love. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Also, don't speak the language of love. Heartless person here. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess I just don't. I don't languify. Um, wow. But yeah, so no, English. But you do make up words like languify. I do make um, up words, and I do also struggle with remembering words. Um, the other day, I didn't remember the word. I think it was for like sofa or couch, so I said room sitting furniture. Mm. Um, yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, I'm not very good with could words. Could be a I'm chair. That could have been a chair, but it could have been a chair. But I think I said cushioned. I said it's usually bigger, and it's like a furniture piece in your room. Listen, that you like I forget things all the time. I, it, recently, I just forgot. Oh. Um, uh, well, you've, we, I think we've forgotten about what our topic was. We were talking about you. That's one of my stand-up jokes. Never mind. Oh. You didn't get it? I said oh, I that... forget things all the time, and then I and You I did go, it too I just, good. I know. You I did, did it too good. Acting. <laughs> that's, that's called oh, acting. Man. That's why you were. That's where you were fooled into believing that I was being real and serious. What was that oh, commercial? Man. I think I could do that with the, with the eyes. Okay. Spotlight, yes. That's your online profile. That's where all casting directors go, and they post on Spotlight casting briefs, okay? And a casting brief is... Oh, I shouldn't let you explain, huh? I guess I guess not. That's where the casting won't... director... Uh, the casting director is in charge of taking a brief that they have been given, he or she, from the client, which is the production company, uh, and or the director... Who are looking to cast a role in something like a commercial or film or television or theater project yes yes tracking you're with me so tracking. far very good Thank now you. that goes on to the spotlight forum now your casting director will your casting agent sorry no the casting director puts it on spotlight your agent claire claire yes claire your agent then goes online and looks and says oh todd kramer fits this brief he is of a certain age 33 he is uh he what keep going keep going yeah excuse me what? um he's tall and handsome and uh and blue eyes and an incredible actor great with a and has an american accent okay great and then they submit you and then you get a call potentially if the client and the director and everybody says okay yeah we'd like to see todd casting agent says, yeah, let's bring Todd in or let's bring Jay in and let's have a look at Jay. And then Jay's agent gets that information back and they go, okay, we want to see Jay. And then Jay's agent sends you um, all the details and you submit yourself or you go into town and you go in for a casting. Yep. That's that's the primer. Okay. Now, there's an issue there. Um, okay. And it's done similarly in America. We're going to talk about that in this episode. We're not teasing it. We're actually going to talk about it at some point in this episode because Jay and I both, neither of us quite know, but um, it was called uh, the Actors Access in America or Casting Call Pro, um, similar, Backstage. Backstage. I don't know what all the... Works, I, actors Access. Cast, yeah. Then there's other profiles that aren't... And there's others. Yeah, there's others that we will go into in detail here and there, but... So this came into my email box, which again, that's electronic mail, not not regular mail. It comes on a something called a computer, computer. Uh -huh. um, you've heard of the internets, yeah? I I am, <laughs> <laughs> I am heard of the internets. Yeah. So uh -huh. on the World Wide Web's. Yes. I'm a I'm of a I'm of an era. Yeah. Are you? Is I'm this why little... you're making sure I've heard of it? Do you? <laughs> Back in your day, were casting calls done with, with differently? Mail? Oh my God! You, Should I you tell you about how they courier? were done? Yeah, courier. Uh, fact, did a courier come and say, "Hello, may we see a?" Oh, it's an American. Like, can we see Mr. Kramer for this? Here's here's my letter. Um, to no, the Todd brief would casting. come through, and back in those days, the brief would come through by fax. 
Oh my God, fax. Right. Fax, or wow. e that's going back a long way. You would get a daily fax, and you had to be a, a member and pay, and you could get the faxes would come out in the day, and that would be all the casting briefs. Oh, then okay. your agent would have a stack of headshots of Jay, right? So it comes uh -huh. out and it says, Jay, we're looking for a little snarky white boy who is with questionable, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> questionable no, keep going. moral, this is, this sounds great. questionable moral skill, talent, uh, moral, <laughs> moral compass. Great. And uh, this sounds a, a right up my alley. Shocking, shockingly gorgeous head of curly blonde hair and okay, it's big, not really that curly, big, beautiful but eyes. Anyway, oh, and your agent would go, that's Jay. He's perfect. He's perfect. And they probably smoked. That's Jay. Yeah, yeah that's Jay. Jay. I'm going I'm to submit Jay. Let's get Jay over. And your, your agent's name was like Vicky or something like that, you know. And you would have to call her every day and go, Vicky, anything for me? Hey, you know, I, I put you up for a couple things, kid. <sighs> and um, then the guy, there was a courier and my buddy um, Tim who. Oh, wow. Yeah. He did it. He did it for a while. It was the kind of job that an actor would do because, it, well, you got access to all kinds of casting directors and stuff and you just drive around town and you go and you would collect. You would send the headshots out and they would get collected and the casting director then would get a stack of headshots with a resume stapled to the back or glued to the back. That's right. Yeah. Black and white headshot. And they would go through these stacks of headshots. Just go through them. Wow. One after the other. And then you would get a call, they, a phone. You'd have to call on the phone and say, "Yeah, uh, we want you know we want Jay to come in." And then Jay would have to get a call for like you know he would come in next Thursday at noon, and he'd have to get in his car. This is L.A., and you'd have to drive down to I don't know Burbank or Hollywood or into the Valley, God forbid, or some other you know Ma uh, Santa God Monica, forsaken God forsaken pit of desert hell. Um, park your car. You'd end up getting a ticket because you'd be in there. You think you'd be in there for 20 minutes, so you'd put like 50 cents in, but you'd actually be in there for about an hour and a half, and you couldn't get out because they might come out at any minute and call you. Uh, and so you'd come out with a $60 parking ticket. Um, it was just absolute hor horror. Um, but that was, yeah, that was the old system. That was, that was pre system. pre internet. Right. And the internet, again, is a system that has been designed globally. Um, yes. Invented by Al Gore, so that we can all oh my get online and what? You know this already. Okay, you think there's I'll... there's no way Al Gore invented the internet. Well, that's what he said. Um... <laughs> he didn't. Wait, is that actually? I... Oh, that's, a, that's, that's actually another a joke that you millennials don't know. Anyway, yeah, Al Gore. Uh, boy, Andy will know that one. Uh, yeah, Al Gore. Uh, he didn't quite say he invented the internet. He said he was instrumental in helping to. Build oh, he was put, instrumental in its development. Yeah, but then everybody sort like of jumped on that and was like, Al Gore says he invented the internet. We're anyway. The internet. So. Great. Okay. Enough jokes. I'm just filling time. We need just a 40-minute podcast. We need podcast. to fill time. I just need, a, I just need to fill time. <laughs> oh. Well, okay. So, so, so this came. This way. came in the email. Now, yeah, Spotlight. Yeah. Spotlight's tax on hope. Now, this is this is where it gets good and interesting, folks, especially if you're in the UK, but also anywhere else you are in the world. There is okay. this kind of issue about should actors have to. Now, I pay, I believe it's about 15 pound, so that's about $17, $18 US a month for Spotlight. Is that correct? Twelve fifty, mm, Yeah. Something like that. Well, no, yeah, yeah, something. It's depending if you buy a part. year in advance and you get a little discount, but um, essentially it's about $15 a, a month um, to be a member of this thing, which you have to be a member of if you want to, get any kind of consideration for work. Yep. Now, my union is calling this a tax on hope. Which, oh, interesting. Right. Which is against the law um, if you were to do it in other. Now, in our industry... Profiting off of hope. Profiting off of the opportunity for work. Yeah. So I couldn't charge, you know, if I had, uh, I don't know, warehouse work, uh, available, I couldn't charge you a monthly fee to get have access to an opportunity. To maybe getting to work. maybe get that job, right? Mm. Um, but for some reason, in the acting industry, they can get away with it. Now, the argument there is that the producers and the casting directors should pay for 
that service to be available. Yeah. And the actors uh -huh. should be able to have that for free. And the okay. reason it's been flagged now, up until now, it hadn't become an, an issue, but um, Spotlight, which again is is ubiquitous, and you cannot, if you if you want to have any opportunity you to want work, to be a professional actor in the UK, you have Spotlight. You have there's to no be button. on, yeah, there's no, there's no way around that. Um, so you have to pay that money. Uh, recently acquired by a company called uh, Global Talent Systems, and I haven't done my research there, but we'd have to see. Yeah who actually owns Global Talent Systems. And I remember that Casting Call Pro had come here and tried to set up shop, and I signed up thinking it was the U.S. one, but it was a U.K. one because mm. I wanted to get some casting opportunities maybe in the States. And I remember even overhearing a conversation while I was at Spy Spotlight for a casting where they were talking about, the people working there were talking about how Casting Call Pro had tried to come in and take over in a market mm. that's closed. But essentially, Spotlight has the monopoly, right? Yeah. Um, and I hope they don't hear this podcast and then kick me out of their system because they think I'm some kind of a muckraker. I don't, think, I don't think they'd be allowed to do that. Oh, you never know. You never know. Conspiracies. It's a conspiracy. I guess, I guess... Everybody's against me. You never know. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't think they would either, but certainly, you know, the I mean, powers that be, it's a very powerful industry, Jay. I hmm. mean, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. All that aside, we'll find out. Stay tuned. For more episodes, does Todd get kicked out of Spotlight? Will he be blackballed in the industry for pointing out? But is blackballed the same as blacklisted? Yeah, essentially. Right. Essentially. Um, so in the UK, the practice of charging work seekers to join a directory such as Spotlight is illegal in most sectors, but the performing mm -hmm. arts and entertainment industries are expressly exempted from this law, like I said before. Now, historically, Equity, our union, my union, has been neutral on this exemption to support it. But Spotlight recently tried to do something where they were giving away, they, they were offering a premium service. So okay. they were going to start charging actors more who wanted to have access to premium services. And I'm not sure what those might have been. Oh, wow. Right. Mm. Because Spotlight mm -hmm. does do some nice things. They have sort of online uh, webinars, yeah, uh, uh, which is a seminar, seminar on the web, by the way. And the web, again, that's the global thing we talked about before that's um, where the-, the internet like, thingy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where the emails come through, um, just to clarify that. Um, Thanks. <laughs> uh, so, but they have webinars, they have sort of, uh, you know, lectures and, and different things, and they, they provide some services to actors. Um, you can even, if you're young, you can- uh, book like a half hour to talk to somebody about your career and some things like that. Um, however, Equity has now stepped in and they blocked that whole idea, that whole concept of premium services. Um, and they've even gone to the next level. They're like, not only are we going to block right. this, but actually Spotlight, um, yeah. F you, you can't even, you really shouldn't even be charging actors in the first place. Yeah, I think they didn't say F you so much because it'd be Probably more not. like under formal circumstances. Um, but they did sort of start making big waves. And um, that's they, really interesting. That's really interesting, actually. Yeah. And they've asked, they've asked now, they've, they've asked Spotlight to comply um, to fall in line with the, at the very minimum to keep it should be reasonable costs right yeah so to say we need this money in order to operate is fair but apparently and this is, might blow you away how much how many people do you think are a member of spotlight in this country of 60 million people oh no um okay um i am guessing mm -hmm. um 250,000 dear god I don't. I was trying to do a like a game show thing. Um, okay. Oh. Two hundred sixty thousand. That's quite a. Okay. I. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm. I'm no, wrong all the time. Obviously, it's fine. Not. Okay. Um. Wow, you went way higher than I would have thought. Uh, but really? that, I would have. Why did you go so high? Everyone. Everyone okay. wants to be an actor. Because everyone wants to be an actor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if everybody wants to pay the twelve pound fifty or whatever it is either. But okay, so it, it's quite a bit. Is it? What is it like? Okay, I went way high. So is went, it like half it, half 50, it, is and, it like and then drop it? It's ninety thousand. Okay. Okay, ninety thousand people are paying fifteen quid a month. Now 
quick math, I'll tell you that it is 1.25 million pounds per month, which they have a nice casting studio downtown and they have a staff of, I don't know, maybe uh, 40 people, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't how many How many people does it take to run a. I don't know. <laughs> they're making run a floor, run a floor, run it. Yeah. Write some emails. Uh, I don't know. So is it reasonable? In other words, you know, the, my union now is asking, is it reasonable that a company makes one and a quarter million pounds per month and isn't making enough, isn't making the money they need to operate? Right. There's no way. There's no way. Of course. So and it is un it's incomparable with other charges uh, that other, you know, uh, casting platforms in the UK are charging and mm -hmm. other organizations that would charge job, uh, not job seekers, but um, job posters, those yeah. who have jobs, hi hirers uh, are not being charged that. So here's the here's the bombshell news, basically, is that Fry Equity's lawyers, and here's the thing with e equity, and you can say what you want, you don't have a lot of experience with equity, but others do, and there's everybody's got an opinion. Um, but when you need a lawyer, <laughs> And there are times as an actor you need a lawyer, and we can talk about those at some point too. Uh, mostly if you get injured or you get kind of screwed on monies hmm. or you're being asked to do something on the set that you know you shouldn't be asked to do. Lots of stuff like that can happen. Um, they may not get us always protected so much when it comes to pay, although that's changing, but when it comes to attorneys, that's what you pay for for equity. Uh, we hmm. got a, Equity's got a team of attorneys. Let me tell you, you know, it would put John Gotti like put put him in prison. Um, these guys are hard hitters, from what I understand, um, hmm. and and they're quite intimidating. So they, the attorneys, the 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 Equity attorneys, um, have put it to spotlight to change uh, their current rates of subscription. Um, oh my gosh! Seriously. Yeah. Wow. Um, and have asked that they change even their business, you know, so that I'll, 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 re I'll read it for you. On Friday, Equity's lawyers wrote to Spotlight, giving them a deadline to provide clear evidence as to how they have come to the current rates of Spotlight subscription. OK. Yeah. So w t explain to us why you need this amount of money. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Our wow. lawyers have also asked that Spotlight immediately alter access to their website so all members of Spotlight. And here's another thing. Can see all profiles within the directory. So I can I can't go into Spotlight and 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 find you without hmm. you giving me your link and I need it sometimes for different reasons, um, but you, you, we don't have access as members, which is against hmm. apparently it's against the law, um, which are against regulations, uh, which is another requirement of the regulations which allow Spotlight to charge work seekers a fee to be able to see who, see who am I up against in sense you know who else is out there seeking work. Um, they've offered, we have offered to work with Spotlight to examine their costs during a continuation of the service whilst ensuring that our members are only paying for those reasonable costs as permitted by the regulations. So okay. this is the letter before action that the lawyers send out that says cease and desist or do this and that, or we will, you know, take you to the high court. So I was chuffed again, I'll use that term. That's a British term I like, um, to see that, um, my union is, is, you know, working. They've talked to people in the labor uh, government, hmm. which is one of the branches of, of government that we have here, one of the parties, um, which is wow. more than labor, obviously, is more, you know, uh, favorable towards the worker. Towards, yeah, like hard labor or whatever. <laughs> Sorry, this, this whole conversation is it's very interesting um but also like i uh so so legal so um so businessy <laughs> well it's guess like we're what talking about the business of acting i know and this is where i, I but so this is a big deal i'm gonna it's tell a big, this is a big deal it's a big deal yeah this is a big deal i think so um and this is why you know i love having you who are younger and you're like me you remind me of myself when i was your age uh, uh. except not quite as pretty. You're pretty, but you weren't as pretty. You're not as pretty as I was. Anyway. Um, okay, that's 
That's fair, isn't it? Uh, whatever. I'll show you pictures of me when I was, how old are you, 17, 18? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, <laughs> you remind me of myself in a sense because when I was your age, I didn't care either about, you know, I just wanted to, I'm going to, I just want to act. I don't care yeah. about all your politics yeah. and all your crud. And when I sent, this is for audiences now, when I sort of expressed to Jay that I want to do a segment about news, uh, he, what did you say? Uh, I was like, uh, I think I was something yeah, like, that's what you did. I'm happy to talk about anything. You know, it's not really my passion, but I'll, you know, <laughs> right. whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep it lively. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, I'll, 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 I'll make some cracks, some wise cracks. If you really feel like you have to talk about news, but I want all you young folk out there to understand it's show. What is it called? It's not show fun. It's not show uh, hobby. It's not show off. It's not show up. It's show there's business. no business like show business like no business I know. Okay, Ethel. Everything it. about it is amusing. That's a perfect. That's spot on. Spot on. Ah, yeah. <laughs> spot on. As no business, business like do it. Show business. <laughs> Ethel. Oh God, in my ears. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, audiences. Wow. I didn't know you had those kind of pipes. Um, ah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, oh, how does she talk? Oh, Ethel Merman. Something like that, Mid-Atlantic. I got to lower your, dang. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I like mic. to scream. When you scream, you got to pull back from the microphone. I told you, Mike, it's called mic you control, did. bro. Well, when Ethel comes, there is no pulling back. I guess not. You're channeling, <laughs> when you're so, channeling the Merman. Um, cool. Anyway. I'm sorry I did that to you about? all. That was me. I got Jay off. I, I did it. I did it. I unleashed the Kraken on that one. Um, the Merman. Anyway, it's show business. The Merman. <laughs> Ooh, you got one. Nice. Good, good for you. Uh, it's Thank show you. business. And the reason it's show business is because people make a lot of money at this game. And as as we heard Nigel talk on a few episodes back, and check out Nigel Barber episode number three, um, you know, he really goes into detail there as well about you know, it, it is a business. Um, mm. <clears throat> and it behooves us to know what is going on in our industry. Um, and I think as you get older and get more in involved with it, you'll get more interested in, you know, these things because they affect you and, and being part of a union and understanding, you know, the bigger kind of community of actors and how we're affected, <clears throat> which was never more apparent, I think, to the public and maybe even to a lot of other actors than with the SAG strikes. <clears throat> That's where it yeah. came to the forefront, right? Yeah, and everyone, I know the SAG strikes were such a big deal. Um, I mean, everyone, I mean, they affected, it's easy to like not care about news when it doesn't directly affect you, but because the strikes were affecting mm -hmm. everyone, you couldn't not be affected. And it was everywhere in the news and everyone was talking about it. And, and we were all out know. of work. Yeah. Even here in the UK. Auditions were like, everything, oh, everything it's dry. How are friends doing? Oh, it's dry. Oh, then, yeah. Then, yeah. When Everyone. You, when you raise your voice again, go away from the mic. Dear God. I gotta... Dear Ooh. God. Okay. I'm not even that close. Okay. Uh, you have a tendency um, anyway, to go, yes. ah, ah, right into the microphone. Voice I, I over artist. You, when you get close to the microphone, you talk like this. Then when you want to yell, you come back here. And that way yeah. you don't disturb my audience. That's right. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, but anyway, yes. And I think at that time also the public understood that, oh, there's quite a few actors out there that not just eke by, but make a living, but, you know, an honest living at acting. <clears throat> it's nothing extravagant. Maybe they're wealthy, but working and earning are key. And in America, of course, there that's all tied to your health insurance and everything else. So, yeah. you know, it's understood now more than ever that <clears throat> there are plenty of us out there that are trying to make a living at this and not going to ever be famous or anything else probably or rich, but make a living and find a niche and work in it. So in order to make sure that nothing is going to take that away, you know, when you're a bit older and you've got a mortgage on a place and, you know, you're relying on that income to make ends meet and you're expecting and you don't know where, you know, this job is good for now, but the show may wrap or, you know, you may, you know, be moved on or whatever. 
it be it won't last forever uh you know how are you going to pay the bills down the line and it becomes important uh to know if your union is getting good good fees for you and good rates or if you're going to continuously be and all your actor colleagues and friends and writer friends and other performers and creatives are going to get screwed by the industry which is a money making corporation you know designed to make money they're all co corporations designed to make money uh, and they're not opening their purse strings much to support or to pay their creative talent uh, and you find that you you become more cons not concerned maybe but just uh, tuned in mm. Todd has me thinking in my head a lot everyone uh, but, ac but actually now he's trying to do his close to the mic who thing <laughs> no but it, it is you have me you have me very much um i've been thinking a lot recently about right about stability you're talking about stability um and like staying right. in one place right as opposed to like i moved to new york and then i'm here and then maybe in four years i'll go to bali i don't know whatever right <laughs> but when you uh having like a place where you're actually staying in for a while mm -hmm. um and you're talking about getting older, settling, right? As the someone calls getting it. Getting older, having a family, settling in, yeah, putting yeah, down roots, so, as it were, yeah. Yeah, these are all these are all thoughts and things that, as you start settling in, you go, wait a second, this is like a yeah, a regular. <laughs> these are regular things. This and is you've worked hard, thing. yeah. You've worked hard to find a, a, a niche. Now, remember, uh, imagine let like, you make your money exclusively. And we're going to talk to a a. a, a a friend, a, a girl I know, a woman I know that um, is an audiobook reader. <clears throat> We're going to have her on the show. Um, she does a lot of audio work, but a prolific audiobook reader. Now that's her niche. You know that that's she's making good money at that. Now imagine the industry AI comes in and takes over, and she's out of work. Now you know what does she she put herself? Let's say, uh, or an actor you know that put themselves out for fifteen years and built themselves a studio and a client base and worked very hard to get there and now one of the big companies just says oh you know what we can get a computer to do that or we can pay somebody you know uh, in the middle east or southeast asia to do that at half price or for a dollar a day or we're not going to stop doing that altogether um or we're just going to lower your rates and you got to suck it up and live with it you know what do you do and this is why uh having this is my pitch now for being in a union, but this is why having a union is is vital, mm. because uh, you know actors are the lowest of the rung in a sense, bottom of the feeding chain. Well, um, muck, on that muck in the note. cesspool, crawling out on their hand. They don't even have a tail yet, and they're slithering out. Of the oh ooze, gosh. the primordial ooze, and that's and Hollywood is just the big boot, the big boot that comes and steps on the little squirming little actor, and oh god, I've, I'm sorry, I've I've taken it. This too is far. this okay. is great. The, our our audiences, our younger audiences, are really gonna love this. The big boot, of the Hollywood mogul, who doesn't care, doesn't give a care about the little the little guy, the creative. But that's the romance, right? Because we try anyway. Yeah, because we're we're we love like we love the craft, and yeah, we're we're insane. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I just thought that was a pleasant the primordial ooze. From Honestly, the... that could be that might be the name of this episode, the primordial ooze. The, the... Like that's right. That might be it. I was gonna, yeah, maybe something more uplifting. Oh, okay, um, the up um. Primordial Genie um, J. Uplifting news? Genie J. J. Genie. Oh, primordial news. News. Ah, oh, oh, I always said it right on time. I, I, maybe I said it a little bit even faster than you. It was. <laughs> it was close. It was primordial close news. Primordial news. <laughs> okay, last quick news yes. item. Let's get into okay. this before we just collapse. Um, <laughs> I mean, ha 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 ha. Uh, ha, ha. I, I backed away from the microphone that time. Yeah, see, you're learning. Just you can also well, it, turn your you, know, you just turn your face. You don't steps. you uh, you want to laugh right into the microphone because you're important. 
but you're not important. Yeah, well, spare the audience. I know, I know, but only to. No, no, it's it's fine. I know. I people tell me all the time on the on the on the tube too. They're like, Jay, can you please not yell? And I'm like, "Uh, okay. Oh yeah, you haven't become Europeanized yet. You're still the loud American guy. England is helping. You know, I'm learning about noise. You know, I'm getting more noise Jeez, conscious. Live, live in the Czech Republic like I did for a decade and where nobody talks and you just stand there and it's like, oh God. it's crazy. I mean, Eastern, Eastern York, Europe, it's, uh, yeah, they're silent. That sounds... And not, not, yeah, New York is the total opposite. Yeah, I lived in New York and four years in a place where like the whole vibe of the place is that everyone makes as much noise as you want, but you just don't complain That's about it. That's Americans right? in general. Yeah, just... Uh, it's, listen to me, everybody. Yeah, ah. but you can't go into a bar yeah, without everybody. Sh- everyone does it. Everybody does it, and nobody. It's just like, it's exhausting to go into the ugly American. It's it's a real thing. I I you hear the Americans traveling around. Nothing against Americans, by the way. Actually, I have you know, well, I have plenty, uh-huh. but anyway. I have plenty to say on the topic. <laughs> but the, the the American tourists, and they know we know we know we're loud. It's just that you you, you know. We don't know that other people think we're loud. Well, okay. okay. If you're me, you don't know you're loud. And then people tell you and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. Audiences, if you think Jay is loud, put it in the comment section. <laughs> we get, we all of a sudden, we get so many comments like, yeah, he's loud. Yeah, he's yeah, totally, he's yeah. Turn he blew my eardrums out. And I, I'm not, no longer going to listen to the podcast because Jay is a big blowhard. No, we're only listening because Todd um, reprimanded him. Go, right. go Todd. Hopefully, Team Todd. yeah, go Todd. Yay. No, it'll probably Todd. be the opposite. They'll probably be like, leave him alone. Todd, stop He's it. Start, Jay is stop. A You're shouting spirit. again into the microphone. You're I've, shouting I've, again into the microphone. I have. Take your face. Shout, shout away. To the side? Yes. My God, I've even. I'm, I've, I've, do you see my video? I've come back. Gosh, maybe I just. Yeah, I just. Turn need your to go head. To the side. My Turn voice your head. travels. I must travel. You think? Um, I guess well, so. I was yeah. trained as a theater actor. Oh God, I got, I got to, I got to keep Is working. You, no, you, I'm, I'm gonna mute you. Okay. Anyway, what were we talking about? Wow. We're talking about your prowess as a voiceover actor. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. actors, okay. the Academy Awards. Can we please move on now? Yes. Do you promise to whisper? Uh huh. Have you seen any of the, do you know the titles that were nominated? Have you seen any of the movies? Well, specifically, I have seen um, The Boy and the Heron, which is actually one of the animated films. Um, I know you're joking, but that's actually much more pleasant. Audiences, if you think Jay's being more pleasant now, please make a comment. That's fine. Um, So I have watched The Boy and the Heron. um, So you watched the cartoon, yeah. The animation, yes. I have not watched any of the others. Right. So, I've not watched so the answer Barbo, Oppenhofer. Bar- <laughs> huh? um, I mean, ba- Barbie, Barbie Hoffer. Uh, Barbie Har- Heimer, Barbie Heimer. Oppen yes. Barbie. Have you seen any of them? I have. In fact, I watched one last night with Justina. It was right up her alley. It was quite the kind of show that she loves. Um, which uh, which kind of kind of movie that she loves? It was a uh, Nyad. Oh yes. Yeah, with uh, uh, um, Annette Benning, yes. Annette Benning and Jodie Foster, and um, mm. absolutely excellent film. Reese Darby, by the way, was also in it, who I I know ever so slightly, um, and uh, saw about a year ago on the street. We waved at each other, although he didn't remember who I was. Um, <laughs> great story, Todd. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a great story? <laughs> uh, but he he also he's he's quite good in it. Welshman playing an American. Um, but it, a great film. I, I liked it a lot. Um, I can see why both were nominated. Um, Annette Benning is just, I mean, gangbusters. And, of course, the whole time she's in the water without any spoilers. It's about a swimmer who tries to swim mm. from Cuba to Florida. Um, and back in my, when I was a boy, back in my day, she was quite, uh, let's say, famous in a sense. She was like the evil Knievel or something, you know, kind of always in the news and popping up with uh, these big swimming um, uh, challenges that she had done 
you know, mm. the kind crossing the English Channel, those kind of swims. But the, she did this impossible swim, or attempted anyway. Uh, no spoilers um, from Cuba to Florida, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Annette Benning plays her, and Jodie Foster plays her friend, the coach, and um, yeah, really good, really good. And then I saw Maestro, which mm. Mm, ah, I mean that's a Ooh, triumph. Chef's kiss. That's like a real yeah. That that was a chef's kiss. That movie. That's when you watch when you watch a movie like that and you go, oh my god, this is what a movie, you know, this is what a movie should be. This is what performance should be. Bradley Cooper, he got some flack for playing the Jew, the Jewish character and having the prosthetics a bit, but he looks like, um, he looks like the guy and he chain smokes through it and stuff. But um, excellent. Anyway, excellent. I don't want to give too much away about. Hmm. Um, that's a beautiful film. I think he's. I don't know. Maybe we maybe we should take a vote. Audience challenge. Who do you think will get the award now? So basically, I'll go through it. We have Bradley Cooper and Maestro, Coleman D- Domingo and Rustin, which I haven't seen Rustin, although it's on my list, hmm. and I like him. Um, and that's a based on that's a biopic. Paul Giamatti. Is up for actor, best actor. You know who he is. Yes, I do. Right. Are you still doing that? I, I'm. Why not? Just keep talking. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> audiences, if you're getting exhausted by Jay's attempt Audience, to put a comment, Jay in. is okay. F- Paul, so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's just get through it. Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Cillian Murphy, Oppenheimer. And Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. Now that is a hell of a lot of powerful competition. That's big. That's a big. That's a. Who that's, do you think is going to win? That's the A team. I haven't seen the other movies, but based on the kind of popularity of Maestro and what Bradley was able to do with that, he's he's a very talented. I uh, he threw himself into that role, man. It's like you want to you want. I thought about doing a kind of a, even a whole video on that. Like mm. for YouTube, just like as a as a a I want to say a study in character acting. Um, mm. So, but I also saw Oppenheimer, and uh, Murphy is excellent in that. It's a great film, but that's more of an ensemble piece as well. I mean, not that Maestro wasn't, mm. but you know, Oppenheimer obviously is the the lead, um, but it was quite the ensemble piece, and. So I'd I'd say it's between Murphy and Cooper, um, although Giamatti, Wright, and Domingo are great actors, uh, you know, and it's just an honor to be uh, to be nominated. Then we have in a supporting role, and I haven't seen any of these except well, Barbie. Ryan's up for Barbie, which I don't think he'll get. Uh, he's a great all, actor. Every person I've ever heard talk about Barbie, ev- the thing that they. Okay, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Um, every person I've seen talk about Barbie, they always mention. Um, they always mention Gosling. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A- a- anyone that I've seen it, that's what everyone mentioned. So when I saw his name, that made sense, because everyone that's always the name. Yeah. I mean, a, a mention is like a like that's a nod too, right? Like just getting a mention is kind of a big. Just getting a nomination, I should say, is a big deal. Like uh oh absolutely you know, yeah yeah you yeah see posters everywhere like not even winning you see you know when people advertise for their movies like if someone hasn't won they say you know Academy, Academy Award, Award nominated. nominated yeah yeah and yeah. it still like holds weight it holds weight that's so, right yeah yeah it's a it's a big do you know why the Academy Awards are a big deal well as far as I'm concerned the Academy Awards are a big deal just because that's how like for advertising purposes right well. <laughs> Yeah, there is something, of course, to be said for that. So, uh, you know, obviously the Academy Awards is the Super Bowl of, you know, acting. Um, it's the big. Do you know how the Academy works? Um, At all? No. In essence. OK, so let's play another guessing game. How how many members are there in the Academy, do you think? Oh, Okay. Um, Ballpark it. Another, You're gonna be like a million, a million, nine hundred thousand people. All right. I'll be. I'll just be Every, highly specific. How many people are? I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Can I give you? I'll give you a bit of a hint so that you get in the okay. ballpark. 
Um, The academy is made up of, do you know this? They are made up of leaders, industry leaders in their, let's say, niche or their their, um, branch of the entertainment. So if you're a costumer uh, and you have been in the game for years and you are, you know, award winning and recognized as being one of the best top, then um, you will be asked and invited to be a member of the, the academy. Uh, makeup artist, uh, special effects, uh, what else, you know? All uh, right, so from animators, that, I'm gonna say, actors, I'm going to say 42. Producers. No, from each branch now. So costume is a branch. I mean, that's a lot. At 42, if one from each branch. No, not one. Sorry, no. Not one from each branch. Oh, no. multiple. Okay, I'll, I'll Can you imagine one line. person votes for the best I'll, best I'll costume the design and one person gets to vote vote, vote, vote for that? No. 210. Wow, okay. So this this has failed miserably. I need a okay, game show button. 8,500 approximately. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's about 8,500. <laughs> wow, I thought my last guess was, I, I was even more wrong than the first time I guessed for Spotlight. Yeah, you went oh way, way under this time. Okay. So yeah, it's eighty. It's about eight thousand five hundred, and the deal is so. So there's if you're if you're in costume, and again you've been in the business 20, 30, 40 years, and you know you've won your own Academy Awards at this point and things. You will be a member of the Academy. So there's probably, I don't know, uh, you know, let's say two or three hundred uh, costumers who are in the Academy. There's two or three hundred uh, producers. Two or three hundred. Special okay. effects, animators, make uh, makeup artists, prosthetics, um, stunts, uh, all the all the categories. Everything. Yeah. Okay. All the categories, and then of course actors, and I can even let's see. Is what? it done like cinematographers, college? Is it directors? Done college style, where like every group get there's like a group yeah. vote, or is it like no, 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 no? It's one one vote cast is per. per. Except for best like best picture, best picture they work it a little different. It's more like yeah, the electoral style, um, and it, I don't know, it's a little more complicated for best picture award because that's com- that's, like that's the, a complete that's like total yeah, 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 yeah. not one section yeah. right. But for best director, everybody gets a say anyway. Um, and then the way they do that then is screeners. You know what screeners are? You've heard of I that? I do know what screeners yeah. are. Yeah. Yep. So if you ever were in L.A. or grew up there or, or, you know, in the in the acting world of L.A., I have friends that are in the Academy and, you know, you go. <gasps> the, I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm kind of an important guy. Um, <laughs> so I kind of know how it works and, and things. It's membership's quite cheap. I think it's only about four or five hundred dollars a year. But um, oh, is that a siren in your background in your soundproof booth? Um, it is definitely not sound. It's definitely not soundproof. No, That's what I'm working on tomorrow. Not. I can hear the London siren go by. That's a little taste of London for all the listeners. Um, anyway, yeah, it's about four or five hundred bucks for the year. You uh, you sign in. Uh, you get wait, no. You you get asked. You have to be asked um, and sponsored, sort of. So like two people have to say, oh, um, join the academy. And of course, they went through some troubles in years past because they didn't have enough diversity in the academy, and so. Uh, you know, pictures and movies were starting to be made with more diverse casts, but uh, the awards were not being offered to diverse films. Um, mm. Specifically, blacks were not being represented in the Academy. And that was just, I think, not even 10 years ago that that became... Black a, people, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That needed to be changed. Well, yeah, yeah, because certainly there was a lot of movies being made, and a lot of stars, but they're just getting overlooked for for films that uh, because the academy was old so there there was a big yeah yeah essentially i guess um the old guard uh needed to be shuffled out a bit you know you get some people in the academy that were in their 80s 90s because they've been there since you know the the 40s um and they don't even watch these movies and so a screener is when you get sent i don't know i guess they don't still do it this way i have to find out but they used to be dvds uh, well, it was tapes <laughs> back in the VHS tape would get sent to your house. Prior to that, it would be, you know, you get tickets to go see the movie and there'd be screenings of films. And then it was tapes and then it was DVDs. And now it's probably streaming, I, I think. Um, but you'd have to have yeah, a password and access and things. And it's watermarked and everything like that. So you might have even seen at some point like some pirated version of something that said, you know, Academy Screener 
on there and you kind of go, oops, somebody got in trouble. Somebody left mm-hmm. their screeners out and, you know, some cleaner or some cousin or something came by and went, oh, yoink, and then and copied it copied and put it online. Uh, and you can get in a lot of trouble for that. You can lose your place with the academy, get kicked out. So you have to be careful with those. But I've watched screeners like at my friend's house and stuff um, before when the Academy Awards come out. So <clears throat> they announce uh, in advance the um, the categories, uh, the, the nominees for the categories. Uh, they give everybody an opportunity to watch the films. And ideally, you watch all the films. Um, and then you vote. And by March, then the, the awards are coming out. And of course, if you know the Academy Awards, it's it's live. There's always some kind of you know chaos or some kind of controversy. And um, over the years, there's been a lots of those kinds of things, like Marlon Brando. I don't remember. You probably never knew, like heard that one. But when Marlon Brando had a Native American woman come on stage and accept his Academy Award for her, and she refused the award, and then gave a long speech about the plight of the Native American peoples and how the hmm. white man, yeah, it was quite, that was in the 70s. Um, Marlon Brando was nowhere to be seen. You know, that really put everybody on edge. Um, yeah, you got to, I, I should have pulled that wow. up. We could watch that. That's, it's, it's that's like, fun. Yeah, yeah, everybody's there in their tuxedos, and she shows up in full, like, Native American garb and, uh, huh. and traditional outfit. That's um, drama. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody knew it was going to happen, and there was rumors. But it, you know, at the time, what can you do? The guy—it's his award. It's his time. It's his. You know. So that happens. Oh, and then, then we had uh, we had the big slap heard around the world uh, just a few years back too, like two or three years ago, with uh, Will Smith and uh, Chris Rock. Oh yeah, that's right. You literally don't watch this stuff, do you? You just don't care about any of it. I mean, it's got nothing to do with acting, but anyway. Uh, it, no, the inter inter celebrity drama is um, it's fun when other people are into it, but no, I don't. Yeah, no, fair I enough. Don't drink. I don't make it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but the Academy Awards, there's something about it for actors because there's it's an aspirational thing, but it's also the business. You know, um, you're watching how people are being recognized, and of course, a movie that gets an Academy Award, so it becomes important. And an actor that gets an Academy Award, they their their rates <laughs> go up. Yeah, right? their career is cemented literally forever. Mm-hmm. And y- yes. Yeah, and you can start demanding more money and and com- commanding more better roles and things like that, and and you just sort of enter into a new upper new echelon. echelon. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, That's the word. For real echelon. Yeah. So it's important to actors. I remember in school, school days, and even before watching the academy awards and having parties <clears throat> i went to theater you know i got a theater degree and it, we were all young um and this is pre-internet uh, of course and, and the internet again if you don't remember is the that's a global yes, 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 okay thing. you remember um uh-huh. somehow yeah in fact if you're listening to this podcast you are probably listening to it on the internet um just for it <laughs> You're 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 you are writing this joke until it dies, Todd. I think it's dead already. I am literally it's, whipping the no, dead. No, no, no. Beyond the horse. death, you are riding it into like it, you're Stiff. with the boatman Stiff. in like in the river sticks with it while it's already dead. You're like following it to the pearly gates. I'm you're kicking like, it going. into the water as as we go. Yeah, um, just I will not let this joke go. It's hysterical. If you think this joke is funny, please write in the comments. <laughs> Todd Kramer is the funniest guy with his internet jokes. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I remember, actually, when I was a kid, I, I remember, yeah. like, the award shows being a bigger deal. And I don't, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but they feel like the last, I don't know how many years, 10, 15 years maybe? Yeah. They have just stopped. Well, I'll tell you why. They've, oh, you know why? I, uh, well, I have a theory. Okay. And it's called the internet. Internet? Right. And that's, we did that yeah, we did yeah, and again, the internet is a okay. Um, <laughs> Stop. No, but so you think it's because of the internet? Because yeah, because we have are... access now to the celebrity stuff more than ever before. So if you, there was a time uh... when the when the Academy Awards was the night to see the stars in another context other than you know on the big screen. 
almost like reality TV. Like you can yeah. actually see them. You can see now, them shining and sparkling and they're all in one place in, you know, in the, in the sixties and it's glamor and it's glitz and you watch it on TV and you think, Oh my God, there they all are. That's my favorite them. star. And it's also, yeah. And it's a shared experience, the movie, right? So we've all seen the movie. Everyone saw, I don't know, the wizard of Oz when it came out, it was just, everybody saw that the sound of music or something. And now, here are those stars from these movies on the red carpet, Humphrey Bogart and you know Lauren Bacall or blah blah, and you go, oh my god, and so it, it was an event. Um, yeah. Now, oh, you know the stars are everywhere. They've got their own TikTok and their their YouTube yeah. channel, and they're they're just ubiquitous. It's just another piece of content. Right. So the the Academy Awards is like almost like, you know, let's all pat each other on the back kind of thing. Uh, and it probably, it, I think it gets a little exhausting. We also had the COVID thing, which put a wrench in, you know, money. The put COVID it, thing. In the COVID, well, because, you know, the spanner in the works of, like, I think there was an Academy Awards. It looked like they were having it in a hotel lobby or, like, in a, they, in a, it looked like they were at a Best Western. <laughs> that that year, do you remember that? Did you watch? I saw some clips of it, and it was like, they there was like, they were all socially distanced, I, think I remember it was, hearing about it. I it remember seeing an article. Just the nominees. Like, no yeah. About like, are they doing this at a best or like a, a, a holiday? Hotel yeah, six? yeah, yeah. It looked like a holiday inn. Jeez, was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, people were joking about like, yeah. I don't know, being at like some random kid's bat mitzvah or something. I don't know. There's it memes. looked like it looked like a holiday inn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, some some, <laughs> I don't know why. Some business conference. Yeah. yeah. It looked like a conference center. And they're sitting there in their fancy dress, all glamour, but, you know, 10, 10 meters apart from each other. And it was sort of ridiculous. So after that, it was like, hmm. Mm. Um, but there was a time when it was the host. You know, it was Billy Crystal is hosting or Steve Martin or uh, Johnny Carson used to host it all the time. And it was great. Um, <clears throat> uh, and yeah. they made a run. Uh, we had a lot of great hosts over the years. Uh, Robin Williams and Whoopi Goldberg and, you know, so that was big thing. What are they going to do? So it was a lot of entertainment, more so than is available now. You know, I I totally really see where you're coming from though. Like now nowadays entertainment and things like that are so readily available. Yeah. Like it's kind of less of a it's Yeah, if less I want to see my Yeah, if I like a star and I want to see her in a nice dress, uh you know, I just go to the Instagram and boom, I got a thousand pictures of her dressed up and there's or, or now if I want to pretend to see my star, I could just go to, you know, I can go to AI, I can go to whatever, Dolly at version three and be like uh, Angelina Jolie dressed mm, up careful, as a- Careful, I'm, careful, careful, careful. Car salesman. Right, okay. Saleswoman. Okay. Ooh. Well, but yeah, you could, you could, you Crisis can averted. theoretically just use AI to- Yeah, I know what you're saying. Do what you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, theoretically. All right, let's let's. Uh, that's its own. That's another. We're towing a topic. fine line here. I feel. <laughs> let's. I want to steer this ship in another direction. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So um, we we're not promoting yes. uh, d uh, doing anything with the images of no celebrities. Absolutely not by, promoting by any means. Okay, so no. we have actresses in a leading role: Annette Bening, Lily Gladstone, Sandra Huller, H Hewler, Carrie Mulligan, Emma Stone, uh, and in a supporting role, Emily Blunt. Danielle Brooks, America Ferreira, Jodie Foster, uh, Divine Joy. Is Jodie Foster in there twice? No. Oh. No, no. Uh, same movie. And so that's the only thing we're interested in anyway is is the actors and, and things. But um, keep an eye out. We'll probably come back and, and circle back around on the Academy Awards in March um, around Academy time. I think it's going to have to be a yearly thing. Great. I don't watch the Academy Awards so much anymore, but you know now that we we kind of do this, I think it's uh, people are going to be interested a little bit. And uh, hey, who knows? Maybe someday we'll have an Academy Award winner on the show. Wow! Won't that be? You love me. You really love me. You don't know what that reference is, do you? I'm pretending I do. Okay, thank you. I do appreciate yeah. that. Sally Field when she won the Academy Award. Oh, there's so many moments we have to you have to go out and you have to watch some some of the best moments from academy award history they really enter the 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 pop culture uh 
Zeitgeist. Yes, thank you. I was going to say lexicon, but that was not right. Zeitgeist oh. was the word. No, zeitgeist. And the, well, some of it in the lexicon. Hey, you like me? She won the award and she took it and she was like, <gasps> she kind of was giving a pretty good speech and she was pretty emotional. And then at some, she just went, and you love me. You really love me. <laughs> wow, that, that's, that is pretty iconic. <laughs> yeah, and everybody went, mm -hmm. awkward, you know. I mean, you know. But she bounced back, they, and she didn't care. She's like, yeah, I said it. I just felt it at the time. But Well, yeah, I mean, she got an Academy Award. Like, someone liked her. Love me. So you really love her. me. Yeah. You know what? People have you definitely said that to me. And people say, you love me. You really love me. And I absolutely go back with, like, yes, darling. Yes, I absolutely love you. And now you know where you. it comes from. And now I get they're actually quoting something. Yeah, they're not actually saying they love you. So well, now you I know. thought they were just being silly. <laughs> You know, they're just like, uh, or they're quoting something. And I'm like, oh, yes, I'm going to pretend I know a quote right back. Right. You know. Well, you're good at that. You're an improv guy and you're a yes man. Okay. And you just take, you take on board whatever's given you as a, as a, as a suggestion and you roll with That's it. Right. Thanks, bro. That's Doing what improv people do. That's why I picked you to be uh, my sidekick because I love you. I Aww. really love you. He's blushing. Even though he doesn't. On that get... note, there's that is the best <laughs> ending note. That's of a, a great ending, I've isn't it? Ever heard? I think so. I think so. Jay, as always, it's been a pleasure. And it has been a pleasure for me. And sir. an honor. Oh. And and uh, and all those things for yeah. I was talking about you. That's what I meant. It's been a pleasure and an honor for you to be in my <laughs> to be in my presence. What did you think I meant? <laughs> hey, there it is. Offstage acting, everybody. We love you, audiences. We really love you. Thanks for listening, tuning in. And next week, we've got more and more and more. We'll be back. Say goodbye, Jay. Goodbye, everyone. Still laughing. <laughs> All right. Until next time, keep acting. And we're out. And I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. You like me.